Um, my name is Juan Zamaripa. I'm with the Center of Community Engagement and Service Learning. Um, I'm here with Richard Doman. Um, we, today's date is November 11th, 2017, and we are currently at the Illinois State University. Um, Richard, um, can you tell us um, where and when you were born? I was born here, uh, well not here, but in Chicago, uh, 12349. Um, who were your parents and what were their occupations? Uh, my dad's name was Charles Doman. My mother was Lottie Doman. Uh, my dad held uh, a number of different jobs uh, from conductor to a truck driver to a chauffeur for the Chicago Park District. Uh, my mom uh, worked for in North Lake most of the time. Uh, Automatic electric. Yeah. Um, did you have any siblings? And if you did, um, names, genders, and if did they serve at all? Uh, no, I I have I had a sister uh, who passed away uh, in her thirties, uh, and I had two brothers. One, well, they're both in their sixties now, okay. but neither of them served. Okay. Um, what were you doing before you entered the service? I worked for Montgomery Wards uh, in their advertising distribution center. I was a supervisor there for uh, their uh, for distributing uh, advertising. Okay. Okay. Um, we'll talk a little bit about your early days of the service. Um, which in which branch of military did you serve? I served in the army. In the army. Okay. Yeah. Um, did you enlist or were you drafted? Well, <laughs> I was drafted originally and to get a specific schooling, I had to enlist. So mm -hmm. I actually have two sets of discharge papers. Oh. Okay. <laughs> um, so what, what, can you kind of walk me through what happened when you departed for training camp and during your early, how the early days of training went for you? Well, it, it, it's uh, you go and you get drafted and you you're locked up. Period. <laughs> you go get your physical and you get sworn in, you, and you, they put you on a bus. I went to Fort Leonard with Texas, and I still remember we spent all night on the lawn being processed. Oh wow! Uh, luckily, it was warm up. <laughs> And it wasn't raining, so it was a good thing that way. But basic training is basic training. You know, they kind of try to get you conditioned. How was that for you, the physical aspects? Uh, I kind of enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. I was in better shape then than I am now, <laughs> you know. <laughs> but, uh, no, it was uh, uh, it was good for me as far as that went. You know, I didn't have any problems with it. Mm -hmm. Um, do you recall um, your instructors? And if you do, how were they like? No, oh, I remember one. Uh, I don't remember his name. He was a, a black drill sergeant, but uh, he still, I still remember him. Uh, <laughs> as far as his name, no, he just impressed me that mm -hmm. much. And, you know, and uh, he was a great help mm -hmm. to everybody there. Right. Um, how long were you were you on, in that situation with him? Well, I think that was uh, a six weeks basic training. Mm -hmm. So we spent I spent six weeks there uh, doing doing basic basic training. Huh? Um, did you receive any specialized training? And if if so, what was that? Uh, I I went to quartermaster school. Quartermaster. Uh, actually. Uh, uh, right after basic, I went to Virginia for quartermaster mm -hmm. school, uh, and then I was sent over to Vietnam. And then when I came back, I was a, a specialist five, which is an NCO. Mm -hmm. I went back to Virginia for uh, NCO quartermaster school. And what is quartermaster school? It's uh, supply. Supply. Managing supplies of... Supplies, yeah. Okay. Well, uh, the NCO is... Uh, Quartermaster was basically uh, unit supply. Okay. 
but the uh, after uh, basic training, the AIT, which was the quartermaster, is uh, inventory control specialist, uh, was the title. Um, how did you adapt to military life? Um, you kind of touched on this previously, including the physical regimen, the barracks, food, and social life. Uh, it Actually, it's a lazy life, as far as <laughs> I was concerned, uh, especially uh, after being a, a sergeant. You know, you have your own room and stuff like that, or you could live off base, you know. Uh, but uh, to me, it was a lazy life. I thought about staying in uh, at one point till I met my wife. Yeah. And, well, that changed everything. <laughs> <laughs> it, it was uh, good camaraderie, you know, uh, with the guys and stuff like that. What would you guys, what were the things you guys would do to, like, pass time? Well, you know, the... Uh, You'd have a rec room and uh, TVs, you know, so you you watch TV, play games, you know, uh, go to the, to the bars and stuff like that. <laughs> um, how old were you again when you first enlisted? Or? Uh, I was 19 years old. 19. Mm -hmm. How was everyone around the same age? Was there anyone? Yep, yeah, because you registered for the draft. Yeah. And if your number was called... Mm -hmm. You went, the only way out of it uh, would be to go to Canada, uh, try to become a conscientious objector, mm -hmm. or just hide. <laughs> and how, how, how was this with just a group of young men, was it, I mean, did, had you gone to college or started college at that point? No, I didn't, I didn't uh, start. That was the other way to get out of mm -hmm. it, that you could be a college deferment. Mm -hmm. And... How, who were the, um, the people you were most close to? Where were they from? Backgrounds, do you remember? Actually, uh, they were all over the place. Mm -hmm. uh, what the people, I, there was five of us mm -hmm. uh, in Vietnam. There was a master sergeant and four, five of us that were from all around the United States. From, uh, and all of, all of us were about the same age. Mm -hmm. Maybe a year older, you know, in between there. I'd say between 19 and 22. Okay. <coughs> um, so you have, met, you, you have mentioned that you served in Vietnam. Mm -hmm. uh, do, you know, do you remember specifically what parts of the country? Uh, I was stationed in Xi'an. Uh, we were part of a project called Operation, uh, I think it was Keystone Blue Jay. This is uh, in 71, 72, when uh, we started sending troops home. We were part of the uh, uh, guys that would accept their equipment to send back to the United States. So we did this, so they didn't leave everything there. Gotcha. Um, were you, if you were on the front lines, um, what combat action did you witness? Really, uh, it was very minimal, very minimal. Yeah. It was so minimal, I don't even remember, you know, some of it. Yeah. So you were, like, so you were managing supplies to get two troops. Well, mm -hmm. actually, we were getting. Uh, they were returning their equipment. Okay. Okay. So, because so, so, they were going stateside, oh. like the first cab unit, mm -hmm. I remember specifically. Because they were recognized uh, units, okay. um, <laughs> but then we would travel. That's uh, the different areas to get equipment, mm -hmm. and that's where you we may have seen some uh, a little bit of combat, mm -hmm. you know, getting shot at and stuff yes. like that. Yeah. Okay. Um, you said it was minimal, but in those instances where there were action, how did how was that for you? Put it this way, I don't like guns till this day. <laughs> I see no use for it. I don't own one even. Yeah. You know, uh, uh, just completely turned me off towards guns. You know, and all this stuff that's going on now is, uh, mm -hmm. I just don't understand it. Um, what kinds of friendships and camaraderie did you form while you were serving in with him? Actually, we, uh, the, the five of us were, we were like brothers through that whole uh, year there. We all hung around together. We went to the movies together. We went to the to the bars together. You know, we all, you know, we stuck together. 
but uh, what was after Vietnam, we all went our separate ways and we never got in touch with each other again. Uh, I don't know. Is there a, is this life? It's, it's just life in general, you know. Uh, we never, it, we just lost contact with one another after the years. Is there um, maybe a moment or a story you would like to share with them? that you enjoyed with them while you were in Vietnam that you remember pretty vividly? You know, it's been so long. Uh, my 21st birthday. <laughs> <laughs> they, uh, the guys got together and I got me a cake and everything. So it was, uh, it was quite a fiasco. <laughs> but uh, that, I do remember that. I mean, that must have been nice. Yeah, it was. It was... Uh, being away from home. Then. Being away from home and stuff like that. Um, how did you to stay in touch with family and friends while you were away? Mostly uh, through letters. Uh, and then uh, when I went on my r and R, I called from uh, Australia. I okay. called them from Australia. Okay. How was that for you, this being away? Was it... Uh, it was difficult in the beginning, mm -hmm. you know, uh, but, as, you know, time went on, you kind of got used to it. And I delayed my R&R &R for that reason, uh, because I knew I wouldn't want to come back. And just through uh, talking with guys there, they always, uh, the ones that took their R&R &R early regretted it, mm -hmm. because you, it's a different feeling when you come back. Uh, you don't want to be there. Yeah. How... Um how long do you get fit R and R? Uh, I think it was two weeks. Okay. You said you were in Australia. Yeah, we went, I went to Australia. How was that for you? Oh, that was fantastic. <laughs> you know, after being out of touch with nine, uh, for nine months with uh, people, you know, in general in civilian clothes, and that's when mini skirts came back <laughs> and stuff like that. So it was it was amazing as yeah. far as that went. So. Did you travel throughout Australia, or were you just? Uh, well, we were we were in Sydney, uh, for most of it. That we did travel up into the mountains and tried our hand at skiing. So <laughs> <laughs> that's fun. Um, how was you being away from your family? How did they cope? With that you? was that was difficult. Yeah. You know, uh, because being sent to Vietnam, you know, they they are, you know families worry, you know, just like uh, they do now with uh, Afghanistan and uh, stuff like that. Uh, cause I have, a my niece's, uh, well, it's her, her boyfriend. He's, uh, in Afghanistan right now. Mm -hmm. Uh, but he is, uh, as a, he's a contractor. Mm -hmm. okay. He's contracted to protect the embassy there. Um, you kind of already touched on this. Um, what did, else did you do for recreation or when you were off duty? Anything, did you learn anything in Vietnam like maybe that you've learned for the first time? Mm, how how uh, <laughs> freely drugs were there at that oh. time. Uh, that's I think that's where a lot of guys really got messed up coming back from there. Uh, the, the drug problem was mm -hmm. rampant over there. And I tried it and didn't care yeah. for it, so and there was nothing for me to worry about as far as that went. But there was a lot of guys that got hooked on the stuff. Because it was so cheap there, too. Mm -hmm. okay. well, um, was there any other memorable moments that you wanted to speak on from your service while you were in Vietnam? Not really. I was glad to leave. <laughs> and how long were you there? I was there a full year. A full year. That was, uh, that was the, the thing. You stayed no more than a year. Mm -hmm. uh, no less than a year. No more than a year. Mm -hmm. you know, it's a, you did, or you could go back if you wanted to. Okay. But uh, it was just, uh, the war was going on long before we got there and we got into it. It wasn't a very popular war here in the United States. Uh, you were more or less, when you came back, you were more or less spat upon uh, for being there. Mm -hmm. You know, you, it's not like uh, now where uh, they thank guys for serving. Uh, you were, you were spat upon. You know, that, that was the difficult part of it. Yeah. Um, 
How, when did you when did you um, arrive in Vietnam? What year was that again? I was in seventy uh, one, January seventy one, uh-huh. right after Christmas and New Year's. Oh, <laughs> not the best time. Um, it, you kind of just mentioned it. Um, how do you do you? Let's see. How do I guess what you said about how when you came back and how you were? I guess most veterans were treated. Um, do you think it was just, I mean, I guess how, just, how did you feel personally and how did Oh yeah, you, you know, I felt hurt, you know, I, I did my, my duty and, uh, the demos, demonstrations about the, the Vietnam War was, uh, it was horrendous, you know, mm-hmm. and, uh, uh, even though you may not have been in combat, uh, some of the guys were called baby killers and stuff like that. And uh, some of the stories that I've heard, you know, with uh, talking with the guys that were in the infantry and stuff like that, when they turn in equipment and stuff like that, uh, it was uh, it was pitiful. It really was. Mm-hmm. How did yourself and other service men kind of deal with that? Uh, I think a lot of the guys uh, at that time uh, had uh, the PTSD, but it wasn't well known at that time like it is now. And this is where I think you have uh, you have such a large number of uh, homeless, and if you find out about it, the majority of them are all Vietnam vets. Mm-hmm. Part of that problem, I think, is because of the drugs. And just trying to cope with uh, life here. Mm-hmm. And I was one of the lucky ones where uh, my, at least my family supported me, yeah. and uh, that's I think that's what I attribute uh, my success to after getting out of there. Mm-hmm. You know. Yeah. So yeah, that was one of my next questions. How did you adjust to civilian life when you returned? That well. I give my my family. I, I got good support from there, and being able to get my job back uh, was another good thing. Uh, and I was supported there, you know. Uh, but it was uh, was a little took a little getting used to mm-hmm. after you know you were regimented to be in the army and stuff like that. But actually. I was in the, after I came back, I was at Fort Hood, Texas. That was like having a regular nine to five job. Mm -hmm. So you were kind of already getting used Mm -hmm. to doing a nine to five routine, except uh, you'd have uh, maneuvers or something like that Mm -hmm. where you'd go out to the field and play war games. Mm -hmm. But uh, that's that's why I said uh, it was a lazy life (laughs) because uh, it was a nine to five job. Mm -hmm. How do you... Was there a um, certain like, time, amount of time it took you to really feel like you're back living a normal, everyday kind of life? Uh, I think when I came back from Vietnam, uh, it took me a while to adjust to, to home life, mm-hmm. uh, being home and stuff like that, because... Uh, I still remember uh, I was asleep and my dad went to wake me up and grab me and I cold cocked him because I didn't know who was, yeah. you know, so it took a while to adjust that way. Mm-hmm. And was there, did anyone or any other groups or family members make a concerted effort in doing certain things to help you readjust? Uh, just, uh, I would say mostly the immediate family. Mm-hmm. Uh, I had a lot of support there. Um, are you a member of any veterans organizations right now? No. So, no. no. Is there a particular reason or just? I never found the time to get involved in that. Uh, used to uh, belong to the American Legion, but I gave that up too because uh, just couldn't find the time. Mm-hmm. Do everything. Um, what have you done since separating from the military? What have I done? Yeah. Uh, 
Actually, I worked in the steel industry for 30-some years. Uh, got married, had two kids. <laughs> I've got four, grand, four lovely grandchildren right now. Uh, 67 years old, I'm kind of partially retired. Uh, I work at uh, Montgomery, uh, Montgomery, I mean at the Walmart. Uh, so it kind of keeps me occupied. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, just an, um, how, did, how do you feel like, how did your wartime experiences affect your life? Just... I don't know if it really affected my life, mm -hmm. uh, but it did uh, make me realize how important family is mm -hmm. and not to lose that. Family means a lot to me, put it that way. Uh, my daughters and stuff like that, you can tell how close we are and stuff. So uh, even though we're not real close as far as distance wise, uh, we still talk on the phone or text each other because I have a daughter that's uh, in Connecticut and uh, because her husband was in the Navy and mm -hmm. that's where they wound up settling right now. <laughs> um, how, is, how is it having... Um military members right now that are in the in serving right now how's that been for you uh i feel proud of them mm -hmm. you know and i let them know it and they thank them for it um do you do any do you go out of your way to do say certain things something to make them feel better like or to deal with how they're feeling yeah if they they know i was in the service and mm -hmm. uh if they and they know how i feel about guns yeah. and uh so it's they don't say too much about the the gun part, you know, stuff like that. Just like my uh, niece's uh, boyfriend, I tell him I'm standoffish about that, and so he honors me, and I honor him, you know, by telling him uh, the great job he's been doing. Mm -hmm. Have they? Do they reach out to you sometimes for advice? No, not n okay. not really. Okay. Not really, because it's a completely different situation. Mm -hmm. that I was in versus what they're in right now. Gotcha. Okay. Um, what are the, some, some life lessons you learned from your military service? Made me grow up quickly. Mm -hmm. uh, and wiser. <laughs> How? <laughs> what kind of? Uh, I always think about things twice before I do it. You know, I just don't... Uh, go and do things uh, half-cocked, you know, mm -hmm. I think about it first, you know, yeah. does it really make sense to do it, uh, and that's how I've been my whole life now. Yeah. Um, how has your military service impacted your feelings about war and the military in general? I think everybody should have gone in the military. Uh, make them grow up a little bit mm -hmm. uh, because kids right now for what I see they don't even want to work mm -hmm. uh, you're I, I'm talking about these teenagers now I, I see it at Walmart mm -hmm. you know it's they don't care mm -hmm. you know and I think that the military would give them some kind of uh, something to follow, you know, some kind of discipline, and, and they're not getting the discipline at home. Um, I guess on that, do you feel, um, you said it would be better, um, what do you think they're going to value if they get out of that military? Because you said, I mean, you value... Well, yeah, you, I think you, you learn uh, discipline, mm -hmm. and, and right now we don't have that. Uh, you know, you've got the, the guns running rampant in the city and stuff like that. There's, they have no values, mm -hmm. you know, they just, they get in an argument and they shoot you. Mm -hmm. You know, that's what I see. Yeah. And uh, I think uh, they would get some kind of value mm -hmm. out of, you know, what life is really about. Mm -hmm. um, what message would you like to leave for future generations who will hear, who will viewers like hear this interview? Mm hmm. 
hopefully they, the wars are all done with by the time I'll never see it, but hopefully it'll be gone. Right now we're in the situation with Korea, and that's it, strictly got me worried. Yeah. You know, and uh, hopefully that there's no wars and people can live in peace. Um, what do you? Th is there ways that um, you feel people that have served, if they have like maybe not, I don't think they're responsibly, but if they should make efforts to come back and teach people about, you know why there shouldn't be war or other ways to avoid it? You know, I don't think we as individuals know how we could stop wars. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, I think it's going to be inevitable. Uh, we're still going to have some kind of conflicts. Mm -hmm. uh, we get street wars, yeah. you know. Uh, I don't think it can be totally stopped. Yeah. We could hope and pray that it would, but I don't think, I don't think it would. Do you think um, having people that have served maybe get into politics or anything like that would help? Well, you have a lot of that yeah. now. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a, a lot of politicians uh, uh, that have served in the military mm -hmm. uh, that are senators and uh, stuff uh, stuff like that. Some of them are from the Vietnam era mm -hmm. uh, and our president has uh, Like McCain, how he's treated him. Yeah. That uh, McCain was a prisoner of war, and mm -hmm. he said, uh, "What was it?" Uh, oh, I can't remember what he said, but it wasn't very nice. Mm -hmm. Put it that way. Mm -hmm. uh, that uh, he was a prisoner of war, so he shouldn't be honored. Yeah. So it, it's uh, stuff like that that kind of turns my stomach mm -hmm. a little bit. Um. <clears throat> Have you said you haven't been able to contact other people you've served with? Mm -hmm. um, is that something you've always thought about? Maybe like I know there's a lot of the social media kind of stuff that uh, makes it a little bit easier. I don't dabble into social media too much. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have a Facebook account. Uh, a lot of them uh, uh, go through my wife. Mm -hmm. Uh, if they want to con some of the people yeah. that want to contact me from my past, they mm -hmm. usually go through my wife because uh, they know my last name mm -hmm. and uh, the, <laughs> the the biggest part was with uh, my wife's name is the same name as uh, another pseudomen, which is mm -hmm. my brother's wife that went through uh, with the uh, Scott Peterson deal so. Mm -hmm. We got a lot of things that way, also. <laughs> um, how do you feel? Um, do you feel nowadays veterans are supported when they come back? Oh yes, more, like, definitely, definitely. Uh, they're treated 100% different than the way we were treated. Uh, and everybody even tells them they're yeah. glad you served, you know, stuff like that. Uh, even with like the, dealing with the post-traumatic stress disorder, do you think enough is being done? No, I don't think enough is being done. How do you... Do you often still interact with young service people every once in a while you could see like no I you know it's uh, I'm at that age now where I don't see too many uh, uh, soldiers or mm -hmm. uh, military personnel you know just like I said just the the one uh, and to me he's gone happy but <laughs> uh, no I don't, I don't associate too much with it mm-hmm um, is there anything else that maybe you wanted to touch on um, that maybe we didn't discuss that you feel like maybe it's important for people to know? No, not really. Not really. Okay. And if, you know, if you had to go back and change anything, 
No, I wouldn't. I wouldn't change anything. No. Uh, I do anything maybe a little bit differently. Maybe a, a few things a little bit differently. Maybe I wouldn't have enlisted uh -huh. and take my chances. Uh, maybe I would have stayed in the military mm -hmm. and made a career out of it. Uh, that's a possibility. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of if ands or buts, you know. But mm -hmm. we do what we got to do at the at the time, yeah. and we go from there, and life goes on. Um, just any last piece of advice for current, um, members in the service? Come home safe. Um, if there's nothing else you wanted, I guess we've pretty much gone through. And yeah, it's, uh, no, there's nothing else I can think of offhand that I could add to it. Like I said, uh, it's been 45 years, so God, <laughs> I think I forgot more than uh, what I could remember. <laughs> well, I'd like to thank you for your time and for your service. Um, thank you. Thank you for participating in this project. I hope I could help. I helped you out a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Any help me is much appreciated. All right. Thank you. All right. Thank you.